All right, Merfolk. This was a deck that we had played some matches with. That was actually a viewer submission, and I was pleasantly surprised by it. It felt very reasonable, um, good, aggressive draws, scotch of interaction with things like Miro Regery, and you got Mistcaller to counter opposing um, opposing collected companies. You got some unblockable Dorcos like Mistcall, Mistcloak Carols here that get stacked up by Deep Root Elite. And honestly, Silver Girl Adept, for people that haven't played with this archetype before, is low-key one of the most powerful cards in the deck just because um, a threat that draws you in their card when it comes into play is really, really good. Especially in this deck where you can like go Silver Girl on two into Glass Pool Mimic on on three we've talked about in other decks like angels but glass pool mimic is really fantastic in terms of these tribal decks you know looking at this deck we're only playing 20 lands but we have 24 lands thanks to glass pool mimic which is great um a youtube comment actually pointed out on the last build that we played that if we cut turn timber symbiosis we'd gained access to the wellspring so i've gone ahead and done that here and honestly i've added some hepshet oasis as an additional utility land instead of the turn timber symbiosis and with this deck being aggressive especially with it having an unblockable threat like miss cloak Herald, i think there's a good chance that oasis is just better than turn timber we did have to give up brazen borrower and the other idiot in the side that makes it harder to target our merfolk but i've had another realm walker so i don't know that that's really going to be strictly a problem so let's go ahead and dive on into some games with this and uh see how it feels today see if we had a fluke last time or if this deck maybe maybe has some real links to it magic applegate thank you for the tier two in the 33 months i appreciate that welcome back sorry about the tech issues Sutter, thank you for the 19 months. Good morning, good morning. You've, you've probably never dug really deep into a Linux system, 1778ers, but trust me when I say whatever your silly little god mode you're suggesting for Windows, it isn't remotely comparable to the level of control you get under, uh, under most Linux desktops. For example, just a very simple user interface feature that Windows doesn't support that would be nice that I haven't been able to find with third-party apps either is on my Linux setup when I had it for many years I would always have the taskbar on just my center monitor auto hide itself when I'm not mousing over it and on Windows they either all auto hide or none of them auto hide you can't toggle it for just one of them it's just like little little things like that where like it's just like, yeah, it's it's an edge case and I'm probably one of the few people that would use it, but like there's actually the power to control what your what your desktop operating interface is doing. What's going on, Urinal Mike? Thank you for the five months spread. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Coots, checking in for the second entire year. Welcome back, Mount your trusty steed. Anti-evil, thanks for the 28 months. Good morning, good morning. All right, that's actually a pretty good draw. That means I can, uh, actually, I think we lead on Miro Rejury here, right? And if they don't have a way to kill this next turn, we just, like, get to flood the board. So Rejury, Rejury, one of the powerful cards of this deck, too. Whenever you cast a Merfolk play, you get to tap or untap something. And then fetching here is actually pretty decent for us because it implies that they don't have a, uh, it implies that they don't have a copy of Fatal Push in hand, so maybe this Rejury is going to get to live. Fingers crossed. They're mousing over their things. We have a Spark Harvest here. Dr. Dre says... Hopefully it's just uh, Village Rights. Crater Monkey, thank you for the 13 months. Welcome back. Good morning, good morning.
So definitely going to avoid blocking this. Don't want to put it into their graveyard for free for them to claim fame or lure us back. I'd be pretty surprised if we're able to race these young pyromancers. Collected. Collected company is obviously our best draw here. Mirror Regery being a close second. Mm, Walker is actually probably the second best. Yeah, yeah, Miss Glow Carol is low-key very, very good. We uh the build we played last time, we actually had two copies of the two mana unblockable Merfolk in it too, and there's a chance that those should still be in my deck. little interface efficiency tip here. You can click all three of these and then click on the number seven here. And it'll blow them out and block them each one to one like this, which is nice. Kenny Colburn, thank you for the brand new Prime support. I know there's a ton of great people you can send that to every single month. Thanks for that this way this month. Normally a YouTube watcher just stopping in to sub and say hi. I appreciate the support. Wouldn't be here without folks like you, so thanks for keeping me around. Needed. Need to draw some of our high impact cards there if they thought seized us a bunch. We unfortunately did not. Scavenging Ooze and Realm Walker are all lovely here. Miss Cloak Herald's text doesn't really work here, so let's just go ahead and board that out. Morning, Giovanni. Thanks for the five months. I have a favorite magic tribe. <laughs> Probably elves. I played a lot of elves in modern for a while. Like that. Like that deck there. What are spells? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Ah, uh, the South, Griffinson. <sighs> you know what feels great? When they attack you with your creature before they hate, before they kill it to draw two cards. <clears throat> or when they kill it to kill your other creature. Sure, yeah, feels good, man. Feels, feels great. Morning, Braveheart. <laughs> Distinction. Thanks for the 22 minutes. Welcome back. Uh, there is a full set of fast lands there, just not historically gold. In fact, Pi Pioneer doesn't have the full set of fast lands either. Only only modern modern legacy and older formats do. Alright, 
Need to dodge fatal push into thought seize, ideally. <laughs> Alright, so they have the push. Do they have the thought seize as well? Of course they do. Oh, alright, sweet. Good good beats, good beats. Hey, JD, thanks for the tip. It's very generous. <clears throat> good morning, good morning. Lunch on me, love GD. Appreciate you. Uh, top cards like to see in Historic that aren't Pioneer Legal, Vendillion Click, Restoration Angel, and, uh, yeah, let's see, like, Delver Secrets. <laughs> it's probably a good, good third. Well, Elder Deep, Elder Deep Fiend's Pioneer Legal, so, so is Loxodon Spider. So it's, it's, those cards will get here eventually. It's gonna take them a little bit, but... Well, to be fair, um... My land that would be turn timber isn't in play, so like, <laughs> even if I had turn timber, I wouldn't have it in play at the moment. Well, Gurmak, okay, so like, I, I I like, I think it's funny how like contract even explicitly said, hey, <clears throat> what, what are cards you want that aren't, that aren't pioneer legal? And then like people listed a bunch of cards that are pioneer legal. <laughs> Just like. Peak, peak Twitch chat. All right, so they like definitely have a removal spell for this miscloak Herald, right? I think I still play Realm Walker out because I think they they have to kill the miscloak Herald. Ooh, that's a good one. <clears throat> I'm gonna play extra green sources in case we draw scavenging use. Mm -mm. I'm gonna spread out the love here, I think. <clears throat> it could be right to stack more on here. There's no way they trade Luris for this, right? So I should attack with this. Between literacy and having never touched Pioneer, it's hard, yeah. Mm, maybe this attack is wrong because they do have this with this. Just lets them get a 5-5 five five next turn. I'm only at 13. They might, they might kill the Realm Walker instead of the Miscloak, huh? Oh, they had Noxious Grasp, okay. So with Noxious Grass, maybe I should have stacked counters on here. College isn't teaching you is a super, I don't even think, college isn't teaching you is a super jaded tick. College, college teaches plenty of people, plenty of things. 
The system's pretty far from ideal or even good, but yeah, I I agree. I agree with Mike. You largely get out of a college experience what you what you put into it. I I agree with the assertion that finishing college does not in any way guarantee that you're guaranteed to to learn something or that everybody gets the same amount of value out of that experience but the idea the idea that it's just useless is not true as well To get, to get political and to critique Wizards of the Coast at the same time, the biggest problem with our, with our college system in the United States especially is honestly the same biggest problem we have with Magic Arena, which is that it's incredibly predatory. Like, there's good things to be had out of it, but the core issue with the system is that it preys upon the people that engage in it. Maybe I should have put a counter on here so that way I can play around this attack. Yeah, we're pretty dead here. And not not being able I, I have to imagine this matchup is pretty difficult to impossible. Not being not being able to take a Lurus off the table or even a Dreadheart Arcanist like this kind of showed a real weakness with this deck. And I don't I don't think you can real real reasonably reasonably fix that. I don't think we have the tools to be able to uh, consistently get under what the opponent is doing without uh Without getting got, perhaps, perhaps like, um, perhaps like adding a fourth, um, a fourth scavenging use to the board could be good. The scavenging, scavenging use can shut down their stuff, but I don't really want to like add bad pieces of blue green removal to my deck. For example, sounds good. Dirtbag Randy and Zombie Magic, thanks for the follows. Good morning. Nah, you don't play bad cards like Incubation and Congruity for one matchup. I guess I'm confused by your statement, Lucas. Can you define what you mean by pile of cards if really cohesive synergy deck qualifies as a pile? Like, can you, can you give me an example of something that's not a pile if it's not a deck that explicitly has a bunch of synergies built into it? You could, you could posit that maybe this deck's not very good, depending on how the deck actually ends up playing out overall, but like... I feel I feel like the way that term is used on average, this deck re wouldn't really qualify. Usually, when I think of describing a deck as a pile of cards, it's uh, it's usually because the deck's all over the place. It's like like when someone like posts their Yorian deck and they can't even manage to fit a bunch of four ofs in their Yorian deck. That's, that's usually my definition of a pile of cards. We're just hoping this doesn't work. And this is just like the absolutely high rolly as possible thing, so. We have four Aether Gusts in our, yeah, they hit, they hit the nuts. We have four Aether Gusts in our sideboard and we have four Mistcaller Herald in the main deck. Honestly, after these first few games, I'm feeling like I want a couple more unblockable Merfolk back in the deck. The unblockable is one of the effects we're looking to have here. In these in these games for sure. Oh, that was turn four. They missed they missed their land drop at Iron Crag feet, but it was turn four.
That was that was turn four, Chet. They played Matron on turn three. I agree the black splash is very good and uh the black splash is very good in the uh the artifact deck Rel relatively free stacking up counters up and blockable dark here no thanks for the heads up i restarted my computer and didn't reload cardboard live coming up now All right, and then they're dead to Miss Cloak Carol plus uh, Oasis next turn, right? Oasis, Oasis looking really good. Much better than turn to person by Oasis here. for the 22 months Crockett. Huh? I feel like I have to keep this. I could also just be wrong to keep a hand without Miss Caller, Aether Gust on the draw. Skirt Prospector on one, three games in a row is pretty good for the opponent. Ben Dor, thanks for the follow. J-Money, thanks for the 35 months. Welcome back. Good to, good to be back. Feel this fish. Take notes here, potential goblet players. Yeah, always, always play your prospector on one. The win rate will be much higher. <laughs> oh. I mean, all things considered, this could have been much worse for me. Probably, probably still dead, right? I imagine. Playing against goblins is just like such absolute garbage as far as player experience is concerned. Just super, super miserable. 
games. The games that feel like good games of Magic are very few and far between. Feels feels a lot like the current Runeterra format. <laughs> Which makes sense, because Runeterra turned into Magic. You have some sideboard cards that give you some semblance of a chance, but for the most part, you're just going to die. Yeah, the, the people that designed Muxus Jin really missed on his design. It's very... Muxus is very clearly an example of an EDH card that they didn't really... Muxus, Muxus is Nexus of Fate. Muxus is a card that they clearly didn't intend to be competitive, constructed, playable. And they were just stapling stats on a goblin EDH commander. And then like, oh shit, it's actually playable and historic. I guess, I guess I don't really fault them to a degree. Actually, that's not, that's not true. So I never, I never fault them for missing on a design. Like the fact that the six mana, the six mana bomb ended up being playable in a format like historic. I don't think, I don't think that's a big oversight. Like I understand missing that as, as always is the case. The blame, in my opinion, firmly falls on the people who refuse to balance the format after the fact. So, I never I never take issue with the design being bad or missing the mark. I always take issue with, uh, after a design misses the mark, why is it still legal? Because they're so terrified to ban things. Especially, yeah, especially in a format like historic where giving out wild cards is pretty trivial for them or that yeah or let me cast winota and, and that's like like that's the the triple down on the offensive part of it like you, you you missed on Muxus's design, you left Muxus legal, but then you left it legal while also leaving the card that's a worse version of Muxus banned. It's just like the perfect, the perfect storm of, of bullshit. I think I'm just glass pool mimicking here because it draws a card. It feels like there's a chance my opponent has a sweeper next turn. Out of their their soul tie control deck here. When it is played on turn four, Muxus isn't played till turn six. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so What's made him get first is aggro? Probably just like a bunch of sweepers, right? I think I want to extend more than this. I think we just attack for for this. I could also just have a sweeper out of hand here still. Yeah. Yeah, it might have. It might have been wrong to play Mirror Reachery. There's a chance I should have just attacked them for five and then plan to end step collected company. Yeah, we played, um, what's it called? We played, uh, Bant Mutate last week, and there's a Naya Mutate deck in the queue we're going to play tomorrow. I think I 
gonna go Deep Root Elite into Mist Cloak Herald into Mist Caller here and stack up counters on here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine mana. I don't I miss Cal? I don't know that we're in a position to beat Vornclix plus Kiora best this he got at this point. What's up, dude? The other switch. Um, there isn't one on the dock out here. There should be one on the dock upstairs and one on the dock down here. Uh, there's some cartridges on the thing upstairs by your mom. <laughs> well... Wow, this is, this is just like actually, actually deterministic, huh? So like, if I put this back and give them this, this recast the Emergent. No, this e Emergent Ultimate of Exiles itself. It'll recast Languish though. Mist Caller doesn't work, chat. Mist, Mist Caller, Mist Caller, the, this casts these cards. Again, one of those, one of those awkward, they're cheating things into play, but they're not technically cheating things into play type, type things. Thanks for my glasses, bud. Appreciate you. I mean, even Curse Catcher wouldn't have been good there, right? Curse Catcher's only counter if they pay one. It's not Mausoleum Wanderer. I feel like I don't want that many Aether Gusts. I'm just bringing one, actually. I'm going to keep my one drops in so we can try and just keep some Realm Walkers. We can build back up after they sweep. Uh, if your audio is distorted, restart your, refresh your Twitch stream. Unless my microphone's being funky again. Audio sounds fine. Yeah, it's probably, probably just, just your Twitch stream. Alright, I mean, if we draw an untapped land here, we're in a pretty good spot. And we didn't, so we're dead. The gate would have also been a good draw. Truly, really, oh my god. 
I was thinking this was the counter. It's and I don't have a counter spell to hold up anyways. Well, if we draw a land after they languish us, we could be okay. It's possible I should have put the first plus one plus one counter on the Regery. All right, didn't matter. Shadow's Verdict. Missed my, missed my land drop on four, passed with four lands with no plays. Just unlucky. Nothing to see here. Alright, well, with two decent company hits, they die here. Start. Just need to. Uh... Hey, that's lethal, right? Oasis? Man, the Oasis has been really good. I, honestly, I might, I might want zero basic forest and four Oasis. Might, I might want zero basic forest and four Oasis. Definitely, it's felt better than turn to Persimiosis. There's so many sweet utility lands in this format. Building, building mana bases in Pioneer and Historic is really great. Yeah, yeah, there aren't like Path to Exiles, Field of Runes, or those type of effects in this format. That punish you for not having basics of every color. Field of Rune's a card in this format? Not really. And the decks that play Field of Rune aren't really fielding aggro decks aggressively. Like the the context is pretty pretty key there. And I'm Biomancer on one here. My opponent's deck doesn't really have blockers anyways. That's great for us. Okay, so... Swamp, Languish. Nope, just dead. Alright, deal. Deal! M lock in, thanks for the follow. The old take take no meaningful game actions and concede. A tried and true Magic the Gathering classic. At a minimum, I'm gonna go 3-1. I don't know that I really, really want all of them. X leg, good morning, good morning. 
to the channel. If you're new, drop it in for the first time, like the couple of new followers there. Welcome. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I stream full time here on Twitch. Um, do a lot of turn based strategy games and card games. Magic's the primary thing I'm back to streaming with Call Dimes released. Like, liked this set a lot in general. Um, also, do some other random variety stuff. Like, we're going to play some more Ratchet and Clank at the end of the stream today. But usually, usually, I do like two to three different standard or historic decks every single day of the week. This coming Sunday is going to be our first Hoaglandia Open Tournament of 2021. It's going to be historic, so we're playing uh, playing all historic this week, prepping for that. Yes, cl Clatch It and Rank. Exactly. It's a little medium. I can see maybe, maybe this being a mulligan. We had, we had, uh, we had running lands here. Regionary into collecting companies. Pretty good. Interesting. I think they're unlikely to trade here, and I think if they do, it's something I'm happy with, so I'm going to go ahead and smack them for three. Blazing Hope. I'm going to be honest, Justin, I don't know what that card does. <laughs> Exile target creature with power greater than or less than or equal to your life. Exile... Player your creature is far greater than or equal to your life total. That's cute. Oh yeah, this is probably there's a good chance they're a they're a crater hoof a, like a crater hoof Luca deck, right? It's probably a good read, which actually means this miss caller is about to be great, right? So Miro Regery here. About to show off some of its power, letting us play through our hand. Hey, Savage Snad. Good to have you here today. I'm excited for Hoots too. Okay, so I'm going to use Deep Root Elite to get my Lords out of uh, Sweltering Sun's range here. Fuck! I did it again! Oh, God. God damn it. Man, I didn't do that at all last time we played this deck, and that's twice now that I've done it today. Really, really need to slow down. All right, if we die to a Crater Hoof Behemoth next turn, I really, I really deserve it. Yeah, it's early. God, we're going to lose to a Crater Hoof Behemoth. I don't drink coffee. All right, so what happened there was I was intending to untap my land and then put a counter on this. Oh, they don't have it. They don't have it, chat. That's so good for us. All right, untap this. Are they allowed to not have it? I don't know. Usually no. Is it red, red, red? No, polymorph is single red, chat. Swim with the fishes, opponent. 
Create creativity is triple, right? Usually the tokens combo deck is a Luca polymorph deck, not creativity. Usually I just have one or one or two copies of Great Earth Behemoth. Miss Caller. Miss Caller stops whatever cheat things into play shenanigans they might have, so we're really lucky that they didn't have it there when I when I messed up the interface. There's another matchup where Miss Cloak Harold just looks stellar. It's very possible these Realm Walkers in the main should just be two more unblockable fish. I should just have some Realm Walkers in the sideboard. Might make that change after this. Unblockable Darkos have looked real good in all these games we've been playing. The deck won the game and you also won the game. I don't see the problem. Yeah, something like that. I don't know what Herald of the Secret Streams is. Is that a card? That sounds like a card that doesn't get hit by Collected Company. Yeah, we actually don't have that many things that involve 1-1 counters, so like... I know it's really easy to like look at that card and think that it's good when we have a draw like we did last game, but like on average, like, you're not gonna have the 2-drop every game, so playing like a 4-drop that's bad when you don't have your 2-drop and your 2-drop's already good on its own is like not good deck building. Paulo, thanks for the 10 months by the way, I think I missed that one, welcome back. Yeah, something, something that we talked about last time we played this deck is I actually, I actually think a big part of the appeal of playing Merfolk compared to some of the other tribal decks in this format is that um, Merfolk, um, what's the word I'm searching for? Merfolk has much better, much better one drops than a lot of the other decks in the format. I'm holding my Mystical Carol back here, so this way if they want to flip Legion's Landing, they have to trade. Obviously, if they have a piece of spot removal, it makes me sad, but I think that's correct. Uh -huh. Am I holding up negate here or am I going merfolk merfolk? Hold up. I'm gonna hold up the gate slash biomancer activation. That's probably the better play, because if they don't if they don't give me something worth the gaining, we can just fart this. And like looting this away to find a fourth lane for company is probably good. I think that's game winning. Yeah, yeah, I agree. With the with the biomancer activation too, I think it definitely pushes us in favor of holding up in a gate. Yeah, yeah, GR GRN standard was a real treat. I think, I literally think the only way GRN standard could have been a better format was if um, it would have had all 10 shock lands in it. I think if they want to trade three things for this, that's fine for us. This is a great draw here, obviously. Wouldn't be surprised to see them throw away two tokens. It could have been wrong to attack with this just because making them throw away a third token on this attack could have been good. Well, Mitt... Miss our Coco deck getting to play Mist Caller is actually, I think, a big part of the appeal of playing this archetype as well.
I think like a lot of a lot of cards that are good hate cards against collected company or collected company deck usually can't afford to play. So the fact that this is a temporary effect and one that we can collected company into is is big. Yeah, like they Coco and then we can Coco and then miscaller them. And that you you get to control the timing really nicely on an effect like this is great. This doesn't cast rate, it puts them into play. Put the exile cards in the bed. Let's see. I just like getting through it. <clears throat> Do I want another lord or just want a silver girl? I have to probably just want another lord. Oh! <laughs> It's symmetrical. <laughs> Chat, they conceded, it's fine. Chat, they conceded, it's fine. Nothing to see here. Move along. I'm not, I'm not used to effects that were designed after listen chat i'm used i'm used to fire design in fire design effects like that are one-sided i was like like my like it had me it had me pick my lord and then my cards went to eggs i was like what is going on what is what's happening Listen, chat, I tried really hard to lose that game, but our deck's busted and it wouldn't let us, so. I cast a collected company after activating a miscaller. Hilarity ensued. Um... Absolutely nothing happened. Move along. Nothing to see here. Look at this chat. I even I even remembered to kill the Narset before attempting to draw a card, okay? I feel like remembering Narset static text forgives all mistakes from the last match. Come on now. Come on. Now. I I remembered Narset static text. Praise me. No no second white here. Ah, it's a tap plans. Um, hey, Adam, thanks for sticking on as a tier one. I appreciate it. Do I... I don't think I play into a sweeper here. I think we have enough stuff that we can play around a sweeper here. We crack him for nine and just draw the all spring. Would have, been, would have been nice if this was untapped so I could company after they... After they wrath me, but... Just to Teferi. Keep up the pace. Uh, 
So this is nine. If I play this, they go to 11 if they absorb. And then I play this, which adds one, and this, which adds two. They could have actual factual fog here. There was actually a Bant deck playing Haze of Pollen recently. It could just be a shark as well. There's a lot of, lot of things to play around here. Yeah, yeah, there was. There was a deck playing Haze of Four. There, there was a deck in the deck dump playing four Haze of Pollen in Bant like this. I hope you play against Grohl for the next six matches, P. Martino. Hope you get stomped in Questing Beast like you deserve. You're a monster. Who hurt me? This person with Haze of Pollen hurt me. You're looking at him. This one right here hurt me. They have really bad allergies, yeah. I tested an abandoned sarcophagus deck for the PT. It wasn't terrible until you forget what Questing Beast says. Yeah. Quester Quester sends a real card. I don't think I want Aether Gust against their deck. Oh. Yeah, it technically tempos fog for a turn. I don't know if that's good enough though. I don't really I don't really have any cards in my deck I hate right now. So I don't really know that I have something I want to cut. Yeah, questing questing be stopping stopping protection from saving your stuff is really something. I, I love, and by love, I mean despise the fact that Wizards not only decided to bring back protection as a mechanic, but in addition to bringing back protection as a mechanic, immediately also introduced Questing Beast and Bone Crusher Giant to make a, confu a mechanic that's already very confusing even more so. Like, yeah, I mean, imagine being the person in that design meeting. Okay, so I want to bring back protection, but I also want to design a bunch of cards that make it interactable and more confusing. And then and then a bunch of people approved that decision. Did the lighting get better on my camera when I moved my hands around? I feel like I need to play with some of the settings on here instead of depending on it, doing it automatically. Yeah, 
I think that's really jaded and silly, Trench. Like, they obviously... The idea that, like, one of the biggest card games in the world doesn't... Like, when people talk about, like, oh, they don't actually test and stuff like that, like, that's obviously just untrue. And posting things like that is very silly and stupid. Like, it's fine to talk about things that you feel like should have been caught or should have been easier to catch, but, like, they, they definitely... They definitely, um, test things. Okay, so I, I almost brought in my masked idiots for game two. And I, I definitely want to bring them in for game three with this cage here. Uh, deck submissions are $50, Justin. We need to move quickly. Oh, you mean for, like, the deck after this one? Um, 50, 50 dollars. I don't, I don't have a giant, I don't have a giant queue anymore. So if I don't, if I don't already have a deck waiting to be played, it could be the next one for 50. And I actually have the third deck we're going to play today is a deck submission, but they requested explicitly to be the third deck. Kurt Lowe, Igar, and Antonio, thanks for the follows, good morning. What if I have to build it on stream? All the same. Don't touch that dial. The audio randomly cutting out for part of the sound effects is a bug in Magic Arena, not on not on your computer's end or Twitch's end. We'll restart the client after this. Unknown hero. Good morning. Good morning. We need to move quickly. We need to move quickly. Drawing a two drop here was good because it means I can kill this Tefri if they don't have a fog. No, I think I think your feels are correct, Silence. I think if you go and check my recording since I came back to streaming more Magic Arena, the audio bugs definitely been more frequent. And then, for people that are new to Magic, this game is over. I have no board. My opponent's at 15. They have an active as Kanta. So, we're going to go ahead and concede and move on to game three here. Yeah, definitely, definitely firmly into garbage time. Want these mass Vandals. It can kill things like as Kanta and it kills Graft Digger's Cage. Maybe I don't want... Maybe I don't want three Realm Walker. But the scoreboard, yep. Especially when it comes to laddering an arena where, yeah, Cage stops Realm Walker because Cage stops you from casting spells from your deck. And Realm Walker, Realm Walker is casting them off the top.
This hand doesn't have a turn two play guaranteed because I want to hold this for a cage down the line, but we can. We can fart. Biomancer on two, which is nice. Although our hand, our hand's pretty good. I guess we just hang tight, huh? It's good to be back, Adam. might live to regret that that discard. The fact that I made that discard and I have two companies in hand here, I think means I'm obligated to hold up the gate this turn. That they, if they stick a cage, I just like lose the game on the spot, keeping these two companies in hand. Watch them like cage plus censor me. That's a good thought. That's a good thought, Well, Master. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right that the green one drops probably better than the unlockable idiot in this matchup, just because it has an extra point of attack. Your assessment that they're generally speaking not blocking is accurate. I think there's a good chance they have a hard counter here with the Graph Digger's Cage. So rather than playing Negate, yeah. So rather than playing Negate and getting my Negate saw it coming and getting stuck with two companies in hand, I think I'd rather just company in response, get that saw it coming than have a Negate left over. Obviously, obviously getting punished for not discarding a land instead of discarding the Mass Vandal. Although I also suppose if I had discarded the land, the Mass Vandal couldn't kill this cage currently, so six in one hand, half dozen in the other. Yeah, yeah, not having to deal with three mana Tefri is a real treat. Like I've, like I've mentioned before and people have asked about Modern and Legacy on stream, I'm just not playing formats where those things are illegal anymore. Hey, thanks for the tip, Justin. What do you, what do you got for me? Kira and Burrell. Like the when you counter a spell, you draw a card and discard a card, Burrell? Is that the is that the one you're talking about? Alright, I mean I just kill this with an attack, right? Alright. Who's ready for a So I'll both get to loot twice in game five, but I get to hold my negate for a sweeper. They can phase on my turn. I'm aware their thing still dies though. So if they phase out one of my two things, their Tefri still takes lethal. I'm aware of how their magic card works. Time to improvise. The desert the desert doesn't matter. Phasing is minus three. I've learned my lesson. Yeah, they're they're playing this as a as a loot twice game five, which I think we're okay with.
Let's not use the word retarded in an LBS usage like that in my chat. Please and thank you. Cadaverous. Thank you for the quarter of year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. About to get Mystic disputed. They had a pause there. I wonder if they have uh if they have a haze pollen here. So, Cage also hits Realm Walker in our deck. So, they're going to get to activate Castle this turn, and they're going to get to activate Castle next turn. So, I, I think we actually need to play Wellspring here, because I need to kill them through Castle Activations. Ideally, I'm not going to play this out because maybe we can beat Wrath of God if we like have a decent draw. If we like, if we like draw a masked vandal, we could, if we draw a masked vandal to kill this cage and then collect a company, we could potentially beat a Wrath of God. We topped a card. So I assume my board is dead because they topped a card. Friends. Could just be another Haze of Pollen, too. God, this card is such a giant pit stain. Extra turn spells are so offensive. I suppose they could scry and still hit Wrath of God, huh? They're, they're dead on board if they hit a blank, right? With the scry. Because we can, we can desert. Don't attack me for two. God damn it. <laughs> uh. Why isn't Karn's Temporal Sundering see much play? Because it's much worse than Alderaan's Epiphany. And you don't really want, like, you you probably don't even want four of that effect because it's expensive. Yeah, I've got two Vandals in my deck still. Like, I've got some pressure in play. We're not just dead. We're just, like, mostly dead. The opponent doesn't, so notable here differences between this game and last game where I conceded is my opponent's life total is much lower this game and my opponent doesn't have a sustained source of card advantage in play. They have Blue Castle, which allows them to scry a bit, but that's not the same as activating Azkant and actually drawing a card each turn. And Blue Castle's power is not only more mana to activate, but it's also less potent than Azkant does. This deck would love a Mutavault. A good, a good creature land would improve the control matchup significantly with this archetype. You probably with the with the what's it called the. Uh, the Moto Dual Face card, you probably go up to as high as like 26 lands in this deck. All right, if this is a third brick, they're dead. Even an untapped land here lets them live thanks to Castle. <laughs> God, playing against Control is just a giant pit stain. Pain. 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 I 
As a heads up, W-O-G is a slur. Don't use it in my chat. Wrath, wrath for short is good. I'm known for my excellent timing. You know what? I'm not done. Mostly, mostly originated from the UK. So people from the US aren't usually aware of that, but a good one, a good one to know. All right, that'll do, pig. That'll do. I mean, to be fair, like, they had Blue Castle scrying, right? And, like, while Blue Castle isn't as good as Azkanta, it's much better than just drawing a card naturally each turn, right? to put the second realm walker in the board right unblockable isn't a word anymore can't be blocked is the the term we use right dude i'm gonna do that a little bit a little bit more aggressive easier to cut through cut through other creature blockers I think we, I don't even think, we de we definitely win that last match, that third, that third game, if I'm just greedy and decide to loot, and decide to loot away my, what's it called? My land instead of my, my mast, whatever. We drew, we drew all those lands in a row. And if I would have, would have kept my way to kill their cage, we would have gotten there for sure with the companies at the end. We're just like one, one more piece of action away from doing something meaningful. Super into this trade. This could definitely be a game where we lose because we're on the draw. Another three or four power thing next turn and we die. I think you could make the argument, Writer Monkey, that it's correct to ditch the land and favor keeping more action because the games against blue-white control are almost all but guaranteed to go long, which means I'm going to have a chance to draw more lands even if I stumble in the short term. That gu guaranteeing the collected company on four was less relevant than having more action in the long term. I think you could make a, a good argument for that. Three mana, two, two, cast Grey Ogre. Go. No, no lords feels real bad. Definitely want these. There's a question of do I want scavenging ooze? 
I think I think the answer is yes. Deep Roots got a pretty poor stat line and is tough to build up. You weren't kidding, that is all. Yeah, I know, I know my vanilla creature names. I ain't, I ain't some magic zoomer. I've been, I've been around the block a while, chat. The jackal pups and the squires and the gray ogres of the world. Hell Giant. Yep, the Hell Giants. Magic creatures have come a long way, chat. Crawworm, the great craw daddy. Days where creatures is nothing but attack and block. Yep. Big, big mood. Okay, I think with this draw, we... Huh? I think with this draw, we Kumena plus Mistbinder. Then we die to Embercleave. Stomp's also not super hot for us here. BL shoot. Thanks for 17 months. Welcome back. Randy Lamb. Thanks for the follow. Good morning. Ah, force of nature. When a six mana 8-8 eight, eight had to come with a drawback. Simpler, simpler times, chat. Simpler times. All right, so I want to play this this turn for sure. The question is, do I play Mist Caller or do I save it to pair with Silver Gill Adept for next turn? I think I save it to pair with Silver Gill Adept for next turn. Because it's technically free with Regery in play. Although it might be nice to have another blocker out that's not one of my lords. Yeah, I'm gonna play a non another non-lord blocker, I think, actually. It also it also covers me in the event that they uh the event that they they play a collecting company next turn. Is getting up to a 5 5 here. Because if I draw a card, like, what's our worst draw next turn? Like, Botanical Sanctum's our worst draw. If we draw a land, as long as it comes to play untapped, we can still play Silvergill Adept even without the Miscaller. And if we draw a Collected Company, we're happy to cast that instead of Silvergill Adept. And if we draw any other Merfolk, it puts Silvergill and Adept to play for two.
you dodge a cleave, you could dodge a ball. How can we change the position of chat? I don't know, I was just playing with things. It felt felt like it looked better over there. It over overlaps rest less of the less relevant screen elements in the corner. Change is bad, fear change. <laughs> The London chat placement has ruined this stream and it must be reverted. <laughs> Ooh. London chat is falling down, falling down, falling down. I mean, to be fair, you could always you could always see where the what their lands were. My previous positioning was the ad banner right underneath their thing with the chat, with the chat ah uh, underneath that. Go that, Chris. Good to have you in the Discord. The real dirty secret of Hoots is it's my my ploy to get all of you into the Discord. Discord long term. We won the game on the play. On the draw, I expect things to be a challenge again. I don't really know that there's much we could do about it. Maybe on the draw, I just want some more one drops. We'll trim the river snakes. How many we got? How many we got for the open so far? Yeah, 50, 58 signed up already. This is definitely our highest, our highest number of pre-registered players for a hoots ever. So I'm interested to see how many we end up with on Sunday. No one drop, but good spells and good mana. If you can't make this particular Sunday, there will be more tournaments in the future. The ad banners don't really cover any action on the battlefield. It has to get really wide and even then you can see the tops of things. And if you put these in this corner here, they cover things like companions, whereas the chat being transparent doesn't fully cover them. I don't know what two drop I want to play here. I think it's just this. There's there's a reason why a significant number of people put their put their what's it called? They put their camera over on the left side of the screen. Also, if like we have a lot of cards in hand, more things get pushed over to the right, which isn't great.
Thanks to the bitty silence. He split the banners to see the pet. Not really. Then that pushes into creatures. When the board when the board gets wide, creatures appear if you move the banners up and down. So like their their creatures fill into like this space here, and mine will fill over into this space here on bigger boards. Believe believe me, chat. Trust me when I say I've thought more about the positioning of my overlay elements than most people on Twitch, and definitely more than most of you in chat. <laughs> and Gus the Skews here. Definitely just playing out another green so my excuse can be good later. What was the game that had that? Oh, I think it was Griftlands. Griftlands actually had a setting in their thing where um, they actually had a setting in their overlay for space for your webcam to appear, which was really sweet. Like if you if you checked a box in the settings, it would leave a leave a space open for your webcam guaranteed. Which was neat, neat forward thinking on their part. Do you worry that some opponents might sue you for having their names shown? This is the United States of America. People can try and sue for whatever they want. It doesn't mean they're going to win. Nobody, nobody's going to win a lawsuit because their username was shown on a Twitch stream. And they would, they would know that if they read the end user license agreement. Man, we really needed another merfolk here, huh? Our lack of, lack of fishes. Is awkward. I think we're just, I think we're just dead. Regery double block Gus keeps us alive. You're right, it keeps us alive, but how do I win a game from there? I guess maybe Scavenging Goose does it. Like, we just die to a stiff breeze out of there, out of their hand rate. Read the ULA, I don't even read magic cards. Yeah, I'm gonna try one more with this. I feel like, I feel like I've been appropriately disillusioned with this deck after today. It's like, fine, but like, last, last time we played this, I felt like the deck might be good. And today, after playing it, it's more like, uh, if you like Merfolk, this deck is playable, but it's probably not actually good. I think this deck, like, falls into the category of, like, plenty of things in Historic where, like, if someone, like, most of the decks we play on this stream end up falling into the category of, like, if someone asked me, Jeff... What's a deck you'd recommend based on pure power level in this format? I wouldn't include Merfolk in that recommendation. But someone, if someone came up and said, Jeff, I love Merfolk, can I win matches with this deck if I play well? The answer to that question is definitely yes. What a, what a fun format that's well balanced and not skewed towards specific types of effects at all. All right, I'm done with this deck. I'm gonna go. Let's build. Let's build Justin's deck and do something else. I'm just not. It's not gonna bother playing against shitty main decade cards. Just not fun. Onward, onwards, upwards, backwards, forward. Actually, I'm gonna be honest, Justin. Um, you can pick something else, or I'll refund your donation. But I just, I just don't feel like playing a deck that's just gonna be shit. So like. The deck, the deck that you donated for is definitely bad and I'm not playing it. 
Um, as far as this goes, uh, like I said, I think if you love Merfolk, this is probably fine. I feel like I've done everything that I can do here. I don't really feel like there's other things I can do to optimize with the current card pool in this format. Um, I think based on current power level, it's probably a little bit on the weak side, but, um, yeah. Yeah.